when the processes are present in the states they are actually represented in a queue so all the processes will be taken and then whenever they move into a state they will be added to particular queue and these queues are implemented as linked list so you could uh, refer to data structures where i'll teach you how to implement a linked list using a i mean queue using a linked list and all these are queues so whatever rectangular boxes i represented here they are all going to be queues right and let's see how this uh, diagram works now initially uh, jobs will be in the job queue which means before they get created once they get created they are going to be in the ready queue so this is going to contain all the queues all the jobs which are ready okay and now from here we take jobs one by one in any in any uh, order that depends on what is the parameter you are looking at sometimes you might look at the burst time and sometimes i mean burst time is the time taken by the process to execute or sometimes you might look at the arrival time which means first come first served or sometimes priority or shortest job or longest job whatever the criteria is you will have some fixed criteria depending on which you can choose one job right and now you will give it to the cpu now that job whenever it is executing it might get completed then it will go to terminate terminate means this is a special queue in which it will wait and then later what we do is we delete all the traces of the process right till then it is going to wait in this queue or sometimes it might need some io then it is going to block state and it is going to be there until that io is finished so once that io is completed again it will come back to the ready or sometimes it will wait for an event so what is an event is i'll tell you later there are various events which will block a process for example there is semaphore okay we shall discuss it later uh, just just now understand that there are some events which will which a process will need to uh, finish before it can come continue execution then it is going to wait in the event queue uh, for something to happen right and after that again it is going to get back into the ready queue and then sometimes what happens is cpu will get into uh, cpu will use the timer so that uh, in round robin i told you that there is a quantum time right so cpu is going to use uh, that uh, process is going to wait for some time execute for some time using quantum uh, that's when i show you at the round robin and after that uh, time is over then you know it will again go back to the ready queue or sometimes uh, whenever it is executing a process with high priority will be available now therefore since the priority of the current process is less we might actually push it back to the ready queue and sometimes there will be four commands so four commands will create a new process and the new process will go into the ready queue okay we shall see this four command later separately for now act as if we didn't know you know i didn't tell you anything about fork right it is a black box for you now i'll just tell you later okay and then one more thing is uh, when you are in the ready you might push some of the uh, you know process to the suspend queue see that previously i have shown you the state diagram here i am showing you the queues it means that these are the data structures which are used to keep track of the process later it will be easy for us to see how many process are in the ready queue and how many process are in the suspend queue so that we can move them around right so this this queues will contain the entire database like what are the process where are they everything right okay and now uh, one more thing you should uh, see here is these decisions or the movements from one queue to other queue is nothing but a movement from one state to the other, one state to the other state and these are taken by various schedulers i told you that there are three types of schedulers right long term medium term and uh, short term so here uh, the process creation is taken care by long term scheduler which means whether to create a process or not that will be taken care by long term scheduler and then the process scheduling which means uh, from the ready queue giving a process to the cpu is taken care by short term scheduler and then uh, the uh, suspension is taken care by um, this medium term scheduler right these are the various schedulers and that is where uh, they are all coming into picture and now you know that this short term scheduler will also contain something called as dispatcher and dispatcher is the one which is responsible for context switching okay with examples it will be clear don't worry about the theory even if you don't understand anything now with lots of examples the points will be clear fine